you can start whenever you're ready. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yep, we're good. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Katie133. I'm a Canadian children's show animator who likes making visual novels in her spare time. I finished 5BN so far. And today I'm going to be talking about story grids, aka the best writing advice I can give you for 2019. So what is a story grid? It's a tool for plotting out your visual novel story. Instead of being overwhelmed trying to write one big plot in a linear way, you're tracking individual plot threads and weaving them together to create a story tapestry using various series. Now, a series is a reoccurring narrative element, such as a person, an object, a phrase, or a place that is repeated in such a way that it goes through a clear evolution. In the example here, the word inconceivable is repeatedly used in the Princess Bride film. And each time it's used, the character Vassini gets more and more agitated. It's showing that his plans are failing. Now, during this entire lecture, keep in mind that when I say series, I mean reoccurring element, not a television series. This is very important because we'll be using series to plot out our visual novel. So remember, a series is a narrative element that appears multiple times. Each appearance in a series is called an iteration. The number of iterations you use for each series is also important. One iteration is a de ex machina, which you are probably trying to avoid because it'll feel like it came out of nowhere. In fact, one iteration doesn't really even count as a series. Two iterations are a brick joke or a callback or Chekhov's gun. Chekhov's gun is a writing term for when you set up something early on as an unimportant detail or a joke, only for it to be super important later on. As screenplay writer Anton Chekhov put it, if you show a gun on the mantelpiece in act one, you need to fire it by act three. The image example here is from Shaun of the Dead, which is the most literal example of a Chekhov's gun I've ever seen. Three iterations are an arc. An arc is a setup, a change of fortune, and a payoff. Four or more are extra reminders and foreshadowing of the payoff. Depending on how long your plot is, how strange the twist is, or how complicated the plot is, you'll need to add more reminders. Each time you add a new iteration to a series, it should be slightly different as that advances the plot by adding change. You can make a story grid with a pen and some scrap paper or by using digital spreadsheets on Microsoft Word or Google Spreadsheets. Or you can use the freeware program Twine since it lets you rearrange plot squares quickly using text notes. Which, use whichever method feels best. To turn a blank spreadsheet into a story grid, you mark the vertical rows with the different scenes in your game in chronological order. You can name each scene or just number them. Then you mark the horizontal column header with the title of each of your series, your character arcs, the romantic subplot, etc. But leave the plot column blank until the end. The plot column is basically everything in the scene that is written to the right of it. If nothing is written to the right of it, if no series are used in that scene, then take that out of your VN because that scene is useless. You can have blank spaces in the grid. The aim is not to fill it out to full capacity, but to organize things and solve problems. A story grid not only allows you to organize the story, but also helps you spot issues in the narrative. Things like side plot disappearing for too long or a plot twist not having enough foreshadowing, a scene adding nothing to the plot, or a series repeating the same thing too much instead of developing. Now, once you know what a story grid is, how does it look when you make one? Well, if you're planning a visual novel, there are several different types of series you can start listing in the grid. I'll name a few here with some quick examples. A big one would be pacing the main plot. If it's a mystery, you want to set up foreshadowing, the mystery, the clues, the individual reveals for each clue's meaning, and then finally the reveal of who done it. You can also include romantic subplots. The general staples in a romance story are the love interests meeting, them spending time together developing chemistry, the realization that they love each other, a crisis, and then their declaration of love. 
then there's plot twists. Here, you once again need an arc. You set up a situation, what the established norm is, then you add foreshadowing here and there, and then you pay it off with the reveal, which will be the opposite of what the, the established information was in the setup. Then there's character arcs. In Disney's The Emperor's New Groove, Cusco starts off as selfish. Then he gets turned into a llama and has to learn to work together with Pacha. Then he eventually gets the chance to drink a potion, which will turn him back into a human, which is what he wants. But he doesn't do it because Pacha is hanging from a ledge and needs to be saved. He gives up what he wants to help someone else. And then with Pacha, Cusco is given another chance to drink a potion using the walk up the wall method that they used together in an earlier scene. Cusco goes from being selfish to selfless. Another vital thing in any visual novel is the story's theme. What is the message of your story? To illustrate any theme, you'll need to set up a question at the beginning of the story and then provide an answer by the end. For example, a phrase can be used to illustrate the theme. In the video game Undertale, there's an early scene where you can look in a mirror, which triggers the narration, it's you. Near the end of the game, you come across another mirror, but now the text reads, despite everything, it's still you. Meaning despite all the challenges the game threw at you, you still refuse to make the most evil choices. However, if you go the evil route and actively try to kill everyone, you look in the mirror and get the text, it's me, Kara. Kara being the name of a character who caused a lot of deaths in the game's backstory. You are no longer yourself. The game's themes of morality and not choosing to be a monster in a world full of them. The question posed is, will a harsh will manage to change you? So what other things can you do to learn more about story grids? I recommend reading Book Architecture by Stuart Horwitz. This is the book where I first discovered the concept of story grids. I was able to borrow the book from the library, but if you can't, there's also a link I'll provide for an online article that talks about a section of the book. And it contains a story grid made by JK Rowling for Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, which is very useful to take a look at. I also suggest practicing making story grids using other people's works, reverse engineering them. I propose using Edgar Wright's films Hot Fuzz and Baby Driver, Douglas Adams' first Dirk Gently novel, and most of all, the novel Good Omens by Sir Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. Why? Because th these are all writers who are very Chekhovian in their writing style. They will set up things early on as tiny details, only for them to be vital later on. So what about me? Where am I going? Where can I be found? Currently, I'm working on a romance game set in the 60s called Eight Suites, as well as a mystery game called The Butler Detective. I also have plans for a medieval cyberpunk VN that has the working title Resonance. And you can follow my journey finishing these projects through my social media, which I've listed here. And you can also play my games on my itch.io page. And now it's question time. All right, guys, just put questions up. You can at me and KD, and then we'll just read them out. But that was a super cool talk. <laughs> Someone wrote, why, why are you so great and how did you get this way? I don't know. <laughs> it just happened. It just happened. Someone asked, have you ever looked into Articky RDC draft? What is that? I have no idea what that uh, is. I don't know what that is. Huh. It's a visual environment for creation and organization of game content. So some kind of software could be interesting. Okay, I'll, I'll look into that. Uh, someone else wrote, how do you handle long series, uh, web serials with several hundred chapters? Um, I think story grids are very good for like broad strokes. You can use them for micromanaging individual scenes if you want, but it's very good for broad strokes. So um, JK R Rowling um, has some series that last the entire Harry Potter series. And then there's some that are only in individual books. So she tends to have a mystery in one per book. And there's also the Harry Potter versus Voldemort 
uh, dynamic which lasts the entire series. So I would say have two grids, one for individual uh, installments and then one for the entire series arc. Uh, someone wrote, do you, do you or have you ever used screen scribe, yeah. scrivener? Maybe, I don't know. And if so, have you made any templates using StoryGrid? Uh, no, I haven't used it. I heard it's good, though. Oh, uh, someone wrote, how does, how, how do series grids play uh, with choices? Um, because they're not linear, it's, it's a story grid, you can have choices lead to different endings which is usually why you have choices in, in visual novels is they lead to different endings. And depending on which ending you get, like a good ending or the evil ending or, or um, the golden ending, it'll have a different theme overall. So you can start off with one question and depending on which choices you make, the answer to that theme will be different. So in the end, um, can the world turn you into a monster? And depending on which ending you get and which choice you make, the answer is yes or no. I think some people are like using the Q&A feature in the webinar, but that's really hard to use. So if you guys can just use the Discord chat, that would be a lot easier for everyone else to see. Dun, dun. OK, but it is now, I think, lunchtime. I've got my calculations. Actually, is there one more person? Uh, it's uh, lunch, no. I believe. It's lunchtime. We're a little bit early. Amazing. Um, but that means that we have about until 2.05 or 2 o'clock around there. We'll all come back. But we are now free to just everyone just chat, go crazy, go get some food if you have to, step away, use the restroom, whatever you guys need. Um, it's an hour long, so uh, an hour and 10 minutes because we're a little bit ahead of schedule. but. Yeah, everyone like who has microphone access, feel free to just co go chat. You can ask questions. You can hold like panel discussions, whatever you guys want. It's just open to everyone. So I will see you guys. I'm going to get some food because I'm starving. Same. Right, can I just jump in? Meal. Yeah. yeah anyone sure. can do um, whatever you want. I was thinking a, a bit more about the question that was asked. What was it? Um, about the sort of player affinity in choices um, and the uh, self-expression um, situation. Uh, and it reminded me of a discussion that was had on the Lemosoft forums probably now quite a long time ago. Uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was like 10 years ago. So things have probably moved on since then. But there is a real kind of sense of um, dislike, I think, within the VN community, particularly the people who have been playing the Japanese side of things for a very, very long time, that choices that are just a form of self-expression without necessarily having that branching narrative, um, you know, big effect on the story are, are a bad idea. And people don't like them because if they are mixed in with choices that do have profound consequences like that, then it becomes very difficult, especially in a visual novel where you can't go back and change your mind to keep track of what sort of route you're going down and what the end result is going to be. Now, one of the things that I did in uh, Emma, A Lady's Maid, is I actually made a conscious decision to address this issue by very simply re representing those choices with slightly different UI. So. And I felt that that was really the best of both worlds because you would have a very clear idea that what you're doing right now is just flavor. You know, it's just kind of banter between two characters or maybe you don't want to have that banter and you're more you're playing a more serious character or, or whatever your self-expression is. And that was fine. But then when it would come to the really key big decisions that would change the fundamentally change the story and what ending you got, um, the UI was represented with a, with a different color and slightly different art um, sort of around the borders. I can, I don't know if I'm 
able to share a, a screen or how that works exactly. I think Randy's probably left and he he's probably the person who would have to pop it around to mine. But um, if you're curious, I'll just find a link to it and I'll share it on Discord. Oh, yeah, actually, um, I can give you a presentation. I don't have anything. Here you go. Ah, okay. there we are. OK. Uh, right, one second. Um, show my screen. Oh, that's the wrong screen. Uh, that one. Right. Um, and then just launch this. So sorry, I feel like I've hijacked things slightly. Everybody's everybody else is really quiet. Right. So, so this is Emma Lady's made, and I'll just scroll through so you can see that's this is a significant choice and I actually have that um, as part of the tutorial so I'll just go back to main menu um, so in the tutorial it, it, it explains um, that these are the just the normal type choices that you know just add flavor uh, and then uh, if I just skip ahead uh, oh, well, there we go. Strawberry chocolate vanilla. That looks familiar. <laughs> Apparently, I've used ice cream before. I, I must have a thing for ice cream. You learn something new every day. So here you, you choose um, a skill that is befitting of a lady, embroidery or singing. And whatever skill you choose, that's the skill that your character is going to have. So obviously, that's a fundamentally important decision, although it is only for the tutorial. Um, and then, um, and then I had a third kind of um, way of showing things, which was this kind of cogwheel, which it means that you're applying a skill. So you'd know that this this option is um, grayed out because you don't have the singing skill, and this option is available because you do. So I just thought I'd add that to the mix for anybody who was, you know, thinking about whether or not to include um, self-expression in there visual novel, I always think it does add something, but you might want to consider who your target audience is. And if your target audience is the hardcore kind of people who have been playing visual novels for a very long time and, and prefer the really hard hitting questions with complex roots, um, then then take that into account and, and maybe, you know, show them that these decisions are different. And that's it. That's all I wanted to say. 